All right, so here we go. I'm going to help you guys out with some of these AP questions um, so that you can get prepared for this test. All right, so let's take a look at this first guy. Um, so some important things to notice about this first graph is that it is already the graph of the derivative. So remember, this is already the graph of speed, and they give it to me from 0 to 6. Let's see. They tell me the velocity is 0, which means the speed is 0 at 0, 3, and 5. They just wanted to make that clear so that you weren't uh, rounding or estimating is actually for sure zero there. Um, the graph is horizontal tangents at t equals one. So at one, I have a perfect tangent and at four, I have a perfect tangent. Those are just things to keep in mind as we do these problems. Okay, so the first thing they ask me is from zero to six, find the time when the particle is farthest to the left. Well, remember, moving to the left is when I have a speed that's negative. And so you have a negative speed this whole time. So you're going left, 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 all the way left until you switch directions at three. So I'm furthest left when uh, time equals three, because then I switch and I start heading back towards the right. Okay, on the interval from just two to three is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing. So notice this isn't asking me if the speed is positive or negative. It's asking me if the speed of the particle is increasing or decreasing. This is the same thing basically as asking if it's speeding up or slowing down. So remember, that means I need to compare the velocity um, in that area, and I need to comp compare the uh, acceleration in that area. Okay, so velocity in that area, let's see, is actually negative that whole time. So this is less than zero, or you could say it's negative. Um, my acceleration is talking about, am I increasing or decreasing? Remember, because if you already have the first derivative and you want to look at acceleration, you need to look at whether it's increasing or decreasing. So from two to three, I'm increasing. So my acceleration is greater than zero. Um, so it's positive. So these two things are working against each other, which means it's slowing down or decreasing. Now, we also talked about the fact that it's headed back towards the x-axis here, so that would also be slowing down. So in this case, I guess you, instead of saying slowing down, you'd say that it was decreasing. Okay, moving on to the last part of the question. Giving a reason for your answer would be this, by the way. Okay, so in the last question, it says, during what time intervals, if any, is the acceleration negative? Well, again, if you're looking for when the acceleration is negative and you already have the derivative, you're looking for when the der or, uh, you're looking for when the first derivative of the velocity is decreasing. So you're looking for intervals where it's decreasing. So let's take a look. It's decreasing to begin with until it reaches its low, which is why they told me that there was a horizontal tan at 1. So from 0 to 1. And then it's increasing until 4, and then decreasing from 4 to 6. I do know to stop at 6 because they said it only went to 6. Also notice that I'm using parentheses because this is talking about concavity since it's acceleration. Okay, for this next question, we've got a particle moving along the x-axis. Um, we don't know the equation for the position, but we do know the equation for the velocity. Now notice this is a calculator problem. I also have an equation for the acceleration, which is the derivative, but they did it for me. So, okay, is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing? Remember, if they're asking if the speed is increasing or decreasing, they're asking is it slowing down or speeding up? So at time t equals 5, well, of course, for a, then I would find the velocity at 5.5, and I would find the acceleration at 5.5. Now, to do this in my calculator, I could literally just graph this equation and plug in 5.5, and I think I get something out that is a negative value. Um, when I plug in 5.5 to my acceleration, I end up with a, let's see, also a negative number, negative 1.358. Um, this one was negative 0.453. So because they're both negative, it's speeding up or it's increasing. And again, your justification could be finding those values. For part B, it wants to know, the, it says the particle changes directions exactly once, find the time when it changes direction. Remember, changing direction would be when the velocity is zero, okay? When I go from being like positive to negative or negative to positive, so, okay. And I do actually have to change. I have to go from being a positive to a negative. So I graphed that and I looked for the zero and I solved that by literally plugging in my slope. Remember, you're looking for when the velocity is zero. So I plugged in my velocity equation, found the zero, and did my zero function and got 5.196. Um, okay, so this 
I can tell right away, which is no calculator, by the way, is talking about rate of change and things like that. So this is probably a related rates question, but let's get started. So the first thing that I know is that ship A is traveling due west, so it's headed this way, toward a lighthouse rock at a speed of 15 kilometers per hour. Now, folks, this side is then getting smaller, which that means that's a negative speed. That's a big one. Okay, for the X is the distance between. Okay, um, we also know that the ship B is traveling north, so that one is going away, which means it does have a positive speed. So this guy is my dx dt, my rate of change of my x side. This guy is my dy dt. Okay. Um, I want to find the distance in kilometers between ship A and ship B if x is 4 and y is 3. Now this part, um, as the AP question, is just do you understand general math? So can you get the distance between the ship? Sure, that's Pythagorean theorem. That's going to be a 5. So 5 kilometers. Pretty easy. I could show it using Pythagorean relationship. B is where you start to do some calculus, which is pretty normal in, on your AP exam. So this now they want the rate of change of the distance between the two ships. Well, the distance between the ships is here. So this part B is basically asking me for dz dt. So this is when I start to set up a relationship. Well, first of all, all three of these sides are changing, so nobody's constant, and the relationship between them is a Pythagorean relationship. So I'm going to set up x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Now, if some one of these was constant, I could replace it with the value, but they all move, so I can't. So then I'm going to take the derivative to introduce my rate. So I have 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 2z dz dt. Now, yes, I can divide everybody by 2, and then I'm going to start replacing with things that I know. So I'm going to divide everybody by the 2. I'm going to plug in x. x was 4. The rate of change of the x side was losing 15 kilometers per hour. My y side was 3, and it was gaining 10 kilometers per hour. My z value was 5, and I don't know dz dt. So then I can just combine terms, divide both sides by 5, and I think for this one I ended up with negative 6 kilometers per hour for my rate of change of my hypotenuse, so it was getting smaller. My last one was part C was talking about the angle, and for this one it said let theta be the angle shown, find the average rate of change of theta, so I want d theta dt in radians per hour, given the same situation. So I had to come up with a relationship on theta. Technically, I could choose any trig relationship. I, t I tend to like tan, so I picked tan. So I started with, I know that tan of theta equals um, y over x. Remember, right now you have to start with your variables. Now, do my y or my x stay constant? No, they both change as these ships move. So unfortunately, you're going to have to do the derivative using this. Now, I would prefer not to use quotient rules, so what I did is multiplied both sides by x first, and then I did the derivative. So I'm going to do the derivative of this. This side is product rule, unfortunately. So the derivative on this side gives me the derivative of the first is 1 times the second is tan dx dt. Don't forget, you did take the derivative with respect to x. Um, plus x times the derivative of, of tan, which, which is sec squared theta. Don't forget your d theta dt. And on my right-hand side, I just have 1, but it is dy dt. OK, so now I'm going to start plugging in things that I know and solve. So tan of theta, you actually do know your tan ratio. Go back up to your triangle. The tangent of theta would be opposite over adjacent, so I can replace that with 3 fourths. My change in x is negative 15 still from the previous problem. My x value, 4. Now secant, go back to your triangle. Secant, remember, is the, uh, the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's hypotenuse over adjacent, so 5 fourths squared. Now, I don't know d theta dt, that's what I'm solving for, but I do know the rate of change of the y, positive 10. So then you can do a little work here. Yes, you have to do this by hand, so you're going to have to put some fractions together. You're going to have to square a fraction. You can handle all that. But I did end up with my d theta dt. It was 85 over 25 when I worked with fractions, but then I reduced that to 17 fifths. Okay. 
Um, for question four, we've got back to particle motion. A particle moves along the x-axis with a velocity given by this. So they give you the velocity, no calculator. I have to find the acceleration at t equals three. So for part a, I'm looking for a of three. Um, but first I have to find the derivative of this. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative and find the actual acceleration. So a of t equals the derivative of 1 is 0. Now the derivative of e's, you got to know those. The derivative of e is e to the 1 minus t times the derivative of what's inside, which is just a negative 1. So that wasn't too terrible. Then I'm going to plug in 3. So I end up with negative e to the negative second, or negative 1 over e squared. Either is acceptable. Uh, okay. For part B, is the speed of the particle increasing? Again, here we go, speed increasing. That's asking you if it's speeding up or slowing down at 3. Well, you just found that A of 3 was this value. And the question, I guess, is, is this value positive or negative? Well, clearly it's negative. So now we need V of 3. So I'm going to plug this into the original. I get negative 1 plus E, 2, that's going to end up being negative 2. Um, so that's the same as negative 1 plus 1 over E squared. The question, I guess, is, is this big enough to cancel out the negative 1? It's not. It's smaller. So this is going to also end up being a negative value. Since they're both negative, it's speeding up or increasing. Let's say that. I like that better. Okay. For part C, find all values of t at which the particle changes directions. You should know changing directions now means that you're looking for when the derivative is 0. This is no calculator, so I'll have to set the derivative equal to 0 by myself. I'm going to bring that 1 over. Now, how do you get rid of, nat of e? Natural log both sides. So I have natural log of 1 equals, that would cancel out the e. This is 0, so t is 1. So at time t equals 1 is when my particle should change directions. Now, I could really make sure that it does, in fact, change directions by plotting one and testing the interval. So, like, I could plug in zero um, to this. If I plug in zero, I get something that is, I believe, positive. And then on the other side, when I plug in something bigger, I get something that's negative. So it does, in fact, change directions. I think this is going to be the last one for this video. Um, this one shows the graph of the derivative. That's huge. Remember, this is already the derivative graph. Um, it goes from negative 1 to 5. It says I have a horizontal tangent at x equals 1, so that is a 0 there, um, and at x equals 3, so there. The function is twice differentiable, and I know that f of 2 is 6. So find the x-coordinate of each of the points of inflection of the graph. Well, this one should be easy. Points of this, here you go. So again, remember, when you're doing these AP questions, the first part is usually an easy question. Do you know that the points of inflection are the maxes and mins of the derivative? They are. So that's what I was looking. So that would be x equals 1 and x equals 3. For part b, at what value of x does f attain its absolute minimum on the closed interval? This one's a little trickier, um, and there is some stuff that we will learn in unit four, but for right now, if I was trying to figure out when it had its absolute max, um, I would start looking at what happens to the values. So what I notice is that my value is decreasing on this entire interval all the way until here, and then it increases, but not as much as it's decreased, if that makes sense. Remember, this whole time, guys, my particle's decreasing. So it's decreasing, 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 and then a little bit increasing. So the max should actually be that leftmost value, which is t equals, I believe, we went all the way down to negative one. Now I could spend more time explaining that, but for now I want you to understand how the graph works. Um, down here, C asks you to find, let's see, an equation for the line tangent to the graph of G at X equals 2. Okay, that means you guys, you know we need the slope at 2, which means we need the derivative at 2, and we actually need what the point is at 2. So we have two things to find. So, well, first of all, to find G of 2, that's not that bad. So I would just replace every X with a 2. So I have 2 times F of 2. Um, unfortunately, I can't use this graph to get f of 2, but that's why they gave me f of 2 up here. So f of 2 is 6, so I have 12. So the point 2, 12 is what I'm going to go through. Now I just need the slope. Well, that means I'm going to have to actually take the derivative. So I'm going to do g prime of x. Now this is a product rule, folks. Derivative of the first, 1 times the second, plus 
the first times the derivative. The way I would write that is f prime of x. Then I want to find it at 2. So I'm going to plug in f of 2 